What's up guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel and happy 2024. I know I'm a bit late to the new year but I've been spending most of the end of December and early January just focusing on myself, spending time with my family, my wife. Brand new video for you guys for 2024. And for this video, I have something a bit different for you guys, something I've not tried before. Now for those of you who don't know, before I started making YouTube videos, before I started this channel, I had only been doing photography for about two years or so. And this passion of mine actually began during the COVID period when we couldn't go out, couldn't do much. Uh, and I'd always wanted to learn how to properly use a digital camera. But with work and a ton of other excuses around, I never got to pursuing this bucket list goal of mine. But finally, when COVID finally came around, uh, we had a lot of time on our hands, so I asked my brother if he could send up his old DSLR uh, for me to try out. This is the Canon EOS 600D. It is an 18 megapixel APS-C camera with a maximum shooting speed of about 3 frames per second. It is practically two decades old and it's no longer in production. So this is technically considered uh, vintage at this point. But this was essentially the DSLR that people got at the time. If they were at all interested in picking up photography, this was the camera that introduced a professional style body at an affordable price point with basic features that could give you enough to help you decide if this was something that you wanted to pursue uh, more seriously and it could entertain that uh, enthusiast uh, itch if you will. It was with this camera that I taught myself the basics of photography. And during the time, uh, I had two lenses with me. One was the kit lens, the 18 to 55 f 3.5 to 5.6 kit lens. Unfortunately, that lens is no longer with me because after about a year of use, that lens finally died on me. And I also had this lens. This is the Canon EF 50mm f 1.8. Essentially, this uh, was what was called the nifty 50 lens now being an APS-C sensor with a 50mm lens the field of view is pretty much equivalent to an 85mm full frame equivalent so at the time despite my interest in street photography this uh, to most people would not be an ideal street photography setup but given the fact that I was still pretty much new to photography, I was not quite sure if I wanted to pursue photography further, this was the setup that I stuck with for almost one and a half to two years. So I pretty much learned the ins and outs of this lens and how to shoot street photography with an 85mm field of view. Now, having shot almost exclusively on the Sony a7 IV that I'm filming on right now for the past six to seven months or so, I was curious to see how much of a quality of life upgrade this camera has brought to my shooting experience in comparison to the Canon that I've used for at least three times the duration of uh, this camera. And also to answer the age-old question of photography, does the gear uh, actually matter? Now one of the first few things that I realized upon picking up the DSLR again was how slow the autofocusing system was. Uh, when I'm shooting street photography, I rely on quick snappy autofocus. In fact, I didn't realize just how much I, I was relying on the crisp autofocus of the Sony a7 IV until I switched back to the EOS 600D because there were numerous times when I was just cursing under my breath wondering why the hell is the autofocus so slow, was it ever this slow? When did, it when did it become this slow? Had I just gotten so used to the speed of the A7 IV that I had forgotten how slow the autofocusing system was? Um, but yes, uh, there were definitely a lot of missed shots as a result of the slow autofocusing system and this is definitely compounded further by the fact that I was shooting on an 85mm equivalent because some of you may know, the wider the field of view, the more difficult it is to get your foreground or background blurry even at a wider aperture but when you're shooting on an 85mm equivalent all that compression that the 85mm focal length gives you results in a higher chance of your subject being out of focus if the autofocusing system is not spot on
The second thing that I realized very early on was the lack of customizability. Now on the Asun A74, I think there are like four dials on the body of the camera. On the Canon EOS 600D, there is only this one single dial here. And using this one dial, I had to adjust aperture, I had to adjust my ISO, I had to adjust charge speed. Everything was basically adjusted with this one dial. On the Sony A74, because of the multiple dials, I could assign each dial to one specific function. Say for example, dial A is shutter speed, dial B is ISO, and things like that. So I could sometimes even adjust both the dials simultaneously. Whereas on this camera, I had to adjust one setting uh, at a time. So this definitely resulted in a bit more of a challenge. I had to plan ahead and adjust my settings far sooner than I would have liked. And this also ultimately resulted in some shots being missed, some opportunities being missed. Third thing that I realized when I went back to shooting on the DSLR now, this might be just an issue for me, but chances are I feel that if you are using a modern day mirrorless camera, a camera that has come out recently, at least within the last five to 10 years or so, you may be used to using the dial on top of the camera to setting a custom setting. For me personally, on the Sony a7 IV, there are three customizable settings on the main dial, C1, C2, C3. I have personally assigned my C1 dial to a set of what I call emergency settings. These emergency settings comprise of a very narrow aperture such as f8, a very fast shutter speed such as uh, 1 over 500 of a second, and a very high uh, ISO range. I set it to I think up to uh, ISO 6400. Uh, what this emergency setting allows me to do is in the event I see a scene coming up or there's something happening in front of me and I know that I do not have time to fumble through the settings, I will automatically set my dial to C1 and capture the scene without worrying too much about what's in focus, what's out of focus, blurry background, bokeh and things like that because my main priority at the time would be capturing the shot, capturing the scene and making sure what I want in focus is in focus. But on the EOS 600D, that's the dial right there, and there's no option to set an emergency set of settings on the camera, so I can't toggle between my normal manual mode of shooting and this, these emergency set of settings. This might be an issue just for me, but chances are I feel that if you've, like I mentioned, if you've been using a modern day mirrorless camera, chances are that you do utilize the customizability of these cameras more, which was something that I definitely missed while I was shooting on the DSLR. Finally, the fourth and last thing that I realized going back to the DSLR was just how fun the experience was because the added challenge of going back and using something that was limited in terms of its technology in comparison to the A7 IV definitely pushed me a little, challenged me creatively, my ability to photograph street and that overall I think made me appreciate the features on the A7 IV more as well as appreciate the amount of growth that I have uh, experienced over the past two years plus or so of doing photography and appreciate all the quality of life upgrades that the Sony A7 IV has brought to my shooting experience. Not only that, but somehow the lighter weight of the Canon EOS 600D was also a pleasant experience. I know that nowadays uh, mirrorless cameras are touted to be lighter than their older DSLR counterparts but for some reason this setup right here, this small body with the small 50mm lens is still lighter than my A7 IV with my Sony 35mm f1.8 lens combination. Don't quite know how that's the case but that is the case and uh, it was definitely lighter. I definitely appreciated the lighter setup and I'm sure you've seen some of the video footage. I'm just sipping coffee with one hand and shooting photographs with the other hand. So that just goes to show you how light the setup was.
So in conclusion, what can I say to finish off this video? I'm definitely not reverting back to DSLRs. I'm still going to keep my Sony a7 IV and it's still going to be my main camera for shooting 99% of the time. But uh, it was a nice refreshing change of pace shooting on the DSLR again. And chances are I probably will take it out with me every once in a while to shoot street just to keep things interesting. But uh, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and as always hit the like button if you like the video, subscribe if you have not already subscribed and stay tuned for future videos. Thank you for watching.